Um, so these are this. This is from uh, Bloomberg Business Week, and they have developed a formula based on the uh, average uh, uh, payroll of all the major the four sports. Mm -hmm. uh, then that as every team's payroll relative to that, the average number of wins, which generally we all know is going to be half the number of games played, and then how many that team wins, and then with a bonus given with a playoff counting basically as 10% of a season. So in baseball, if you win a playoff game, it would be worth 16.2 uh, uh, wins, 1.6 wins. And this in the is NFL. just their arbitrary. This is their arbitrary, ranking. and a championship is 50% of a season. Uh, so obviously winning a championship is going to help you out enormously. And you look at the first teams on the list, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4 are all fairly recent championship winners. Mm -hmm. uh, the Chicago Blackhawks, who won the Stanley Cup last year, they are the most economical team, right? Yes. It's a fair way. The smartest spender. Smartest the spenders. St. Louis Cardinals, who uh, uh, won the championship uh, uh, two seasons ago, are second. The Boston Bruins, who won a championship as well in the last five years, are three. The Patriots, who have not won but have a, but but are racking up playoff wins right. in most years, uh, and then the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, who combined without a lot of playoff wins, they have some, but averaging 90, nearly 91 regular season wins a season, with usually the last, the number 30 payroll, that'll get yeah, you out of the list. Oh yeah, they've got 59.6 million. Is their yeah, average payroll, and the league average is 94.8. Yeah, so they're $35 million under the league average payroll, and they're winning 91 games a year. So the, the level smart. of detail that they went into to compile this list, um, it makes you wonder, at least it made me wonder, is this one of those things where then eventually, if this gets perfected, if it turns into a science where you get to actually rate your GM, your president, your operations people <laughs> right. to see if they're doing their job the best way possible. Because, you know, there's ratings for everyone. You, sure. you have your stats if you're the point guard, your assist to turnover ratio, you know, what's your batting average, you know, what, how many wins do you have if you're starting pitcher. All these things come into play. But are we, do we finally have a real system, not that this would be the one, yeah. to rate your GM? I, I think, I, but I think you're on to something. I think you really do, um, in a sense. that This is pretty close. It, it's different in every sport. Like, the Heat is the top NBA team. They're about four million over the average payroll. They averaged 52 wins over the last five years. They have a bonus there of 9.4 playoff wins mm -hmm. um, and two titles. So they're, but in the NBA, of course, it really is just about winning because the salary cap keeps the highest right. team and the lowest team pretty close. There's not right. you can't do what the Devil Rays are doing. With the Rays, excuse me, doing, <laughs> you can't do what the Rays are doing in the NBA because everybody's too close. Like the yeah, the Heat and is also at there's 70. no cap. There's still no cap, right? There's no cap. There yeah. are penalties for yeah. going over thresholds, mm -hmm. in the, and there's revenue sharing now. But there's no cap. If you want to keep spending and be willing to pay the tax on it, then you keep spending. Totally. Uh, and there's no floor. The Marlins can gut the payroll down to almost nothing. And Why would they do something like that? <laughs> <laughs> but here's what I think is interesting about this list. is you look at this, this list, and the bottom team is not surprisingly the uh, Chicago Cubs, because they've had some significant payroll, $120 million basically. They only averaged 71 wins, and let me see if they won a championship in the last five years. No, it's the Cubs. 120. <laughs> right, right. Championships won for the Cubs in the last 100 years uh, is also none. Um, so, uh, uh, but what, where you don't want to be is, is in the middle. Real, yeah. What you don't want to be is stuck in the 70s to some extent. Um, I mean, there are some good teams that spend, like the Yankees are all the way at 92 because they spend so much money. Mm -hmm. And this formula doesn't allow them to make up for it rapidly enough with championships and playoff <laughs> wins. But the Yankees will take it. But they do let you—they do let you make your own formula here. You can create your own ranking, so you can pick what percentage playoff values and championship values. So I'm sure that if <laughs> if Yankee fans want to, oh, they can totally. they can slide the they scale can, and make it a much more their, okay, so a much okay. more smart spending. Right. Team. Although in the last five years, of course, the Yankees have only that one championship. When, when I hear about smart spending, the first thing I think is how does this apply to like a regular individual life? So, okay, say you make, okay, we're going to give you some more money. Okay. Say you make $100,000 a year, and then you're like, how am I going to spend my money? Because there's smart spenders, you're frugal, or you're just a spender, you're going to throw all your money away because you just got your hands on it and you're irresponsible. So then, say you decide to drive the Toyota Corolla, mm -hmm. but you can afford, you know, the BMW you know, or the Range Rover, right? So instead you do that, and you're like, well, you know what, I'm saving so much more money, and my gas 
uh, mileage is great and all this, but you're driving a little silver Corolla. Yet, and yet your neighbor here, who drives the Range Rover, makes the same amount of money, he probably gets more women, you know, he probably has more fun. <laughs> More people like him, so your 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 quality of life there's is not, a little better. But you have a little bit more left, less left in your pockets. So it's a similar <laughs> thing, like you know, like we're talking the Yankees, the they spend all this money, uh, but everyone thinks about everyone thinks, oh, every free agent is going to go to the Yankees because they want to want to play for the historic team. Also, this what this there's, there's, there's benefits to it's spending all true. too much. Absolutely. And there's and there's uh, and for the Yankees with an enormous TV deal, like this doesn't take into account revenue. Like the Yankees yeah. can spend two hundred and seven million dollars on the payroll, the Rays can't. They can spend fifty-five million because the Yankees rake in that that gap is made and more is made up in the Yankees TV deal. So if the object is just to make money, that's what's left out of this. Profitability is uh -huh. completely left out of this. But I just think the dangerous place to be is like I look at teams that I like, the Washington Football Team. <laughs> They're a disaster. They got the playoffs. Is that? I haven't. Are you calling it the Washington Football Team? Yeah. When I can remember to. Okay. They're so at one fifteen, the and of course they've spent oh. money wildly and recklessly, and they don't have the wins to show for it. They do have some playoff appearances, but in the last five years, actually no playoff wins. What do you think that is? That's just bad decisions on who they brought in. Yeah, it's terrible management. It's just, it's just bad like management, they should have known coaching. better. They should have scouted better. Sometimes it's unlucky. They brought in uh, <laughs> our boy who tore his knee up in that oh, playoff RG3. game. Oh, RG three. RG three looks great, right? That was you know. Sure. No, that was bad and luck. Last year was yeah, bad luck. Yeah. The year before. They might do well this year. Um, no, no, look, they, they hiring Shanahan and drafting Griffin, that, that may well have worked out, although Shanahan now fired. Yeah. Uh, but since he took over the team, and I think, when did he take over that team? I mean, he's coming up on a lot of years now uh, in the 90s, when he took over, mm -hmm. like, 97 or 98. <clears throat> they've been horrible. He's just made a series of terrible decisions. <laughs> no bad luck for the Redskins. But then the teams that, like, you know, you see the teams that are rewarded, that are smart. We've said this a zillion times. The Patriots there at number four. I'm going to show a little know. bit of my biases. Okay. But, um, you know, the Patriots, maybe there's some good luck on their side that they didn't <laughs> plan for. They didn't come in and draft Tom Brady high and then say, oh, my God, this guy's going to be the next Joe Montana. They didn't do that. Uh, you know, he sauntered in like the skinny tall kid after an injury, you know, with after, they, after they figured what would have been. So there's a little bit of luck. Now, the good part is, yeah, they brought in a great coach. I hate that guy, but they brought in a really good coach. Here's what they don't do. They trade Richard Seymour for picks. They don't trade, they don't do, the Redskins do the exact, the Redskins true. trade for Richard Seymour. <laughs> the Patriots trade Richard Seymour and get picks. And he can still play, but the picks mattered more. And they build through the draft because those guys are affordable and they draft well. So, yeah, did they get, did, when they took Brady in the sixth round, did they think he was going to be one of the five best quarterbacks to ever suit up? No, I don't mm -hmm. think they did. But, at some point, with their consistently good record of bringing in the right players and the right free agents, everybody misses some, but they're the guys who recreated Randy Moss. Like, it's right. not, the things right. have, like, it's not, they know what they're doing. So you then, if you look at the, if you just do the NBA and the NFL, I look here and I see two of my teams there, Washington and the NFL is 58, the Wizards are last, 62, right? Mm -hmm. But they're at least, to me, last in the right way. Like, they're spending, they're, they're not overspending in money. They have to. At the NBA, there's a cap there, right? But, but if you're going to lose, lose big. Get players. Mm -hmm. Draft high. John Wall, Bradley Beal, Otto Porter this year. It might not work out. But nonetheless, they put themselves in a position to draft elite players. Where you don't want to be is in that terrible, terrible middle ground. Also, for wins, I think what's critical is, especially in baseball, where there's much, where there's cap, where, where there is no cap and there's such a discrepancy between the highest spending teams and the lowest spending teams. At some point, baseball teams made a decision that I don't want to spend 20 million extra dollars to win 76 games. Right. I'd rather win 60 games and save that 20 million dollars. That irritates fans, but if you know you don't have a team that can do well and go to the postseason, then you might as well be really bad. As long as you take the 20 million that you're saving in a couple of seasons and then that 40 million shows up, when you get good, when right. you've drafted well, and when those young players you have, like the Astros are doing now, the Astros who just literally quit last year. Yeah. They were like, nope, nope, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. We'll trade him. What do you do? He's making $5 million. Take him. I don't care. Give us anything. Uh, they got all these prospects. They did get prospects back, and they drafted well. And they're going to be good, probably. They have an insane, incompetent, buffoonish manager named Bo Porter. But once they get rid of him, theoretically, in two years, they have big revenue coming, they have a TV deal, that money will get spent when they're ready to spend it. That's the smart thing to do. That's what that list does. This, that's what this list doesn't take into account.